Hello and welcome to my morning note. The last 24 hours or so have demonstrated once again that the market is very worked up about QE, the uh, Fed's policy of buying bonds to keep yields down. I'm not quite sure that the, uh, the latest news from Bernanke really makes any great change. The situation is still that everything is dependent on unemployment, at least that's how I see it. If unemployment improves as the Fed currently expects, then QE will be over within a year. If it doesn't, then it won't. But what will the effect be for asset allocation and for different kinds of stocks? I mean, now to discuss this is the principal of Absolute Strategy Research here in London, Ian Harnett. Ian, thank you very much for joining me once again. Thanks, John. Let's start by taking a look at a, a chart which demonstrates that unemployment might be important for QE, <laughs> but it's very important for asset allocation anyway. Take, take me through this chart. Fantastically important. You know, mm. if the, uh, this is one of our key um, asset alloc allocation indicators. Equities beat bonds when unemployment comes down. It's very simple. And um, the reverse when it goes up. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And so, but it's an asymmetric relationship. Mm. Unemployment comes down over three to five years. It goes up in 18 months to two years. So if the Fed is focused on getting unemployment down to 6.5%, so that's the left-hand axis, then we've still got another year and a half, perhaps more, before you really start to have to worry. And it's only when interest rates really go up enough mm. to squeeze the corporate sector to get them to shed employment right. that equities really come under pressure. So lots more to go for here. Okay, and by your argument, equities will continue to beat bonds even though the Fed is continuing to support bonds. Yeah. And, you know, from that point of view, Mr. Bernanke must be delighted with what he's seen in the last year. You know, we've seen bond yields go up by over 100 basis mm. points. And what's the S&P done? Still up more than 15%. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you. He's probably very happy about it. Now, let's take a look at uh, this very interesting phenomenon that you've highlighted in recent research of uh, corporate sector balances. We hear a lot about government deficits, yeah. Yeah. but the, the flip side of that is... Uh, is corporate surpluses. Take me so, through this. So, you know, the bottom line for us is that we think that QE is about making cash a curse on the balance sheet of the corporate sector. Mm. What the, 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 the monetary authorities are trying to do here is to actually get, it's less about the banks, it's about getting the corporate spending, doing that investment, doing that employment. And when that happens, the corporate surpluses come down over time and then equities beat bonds. And co so we do see that those those uh, balances are, are coming down despite yep. a lot of They've publicity about high They've come down from about six and a half percent down to two and a half percent, almost a three percent change in the last couple of years. But are you predicting that we'll see much more in the way of capex what in the future? You, what you've got to see is that you will have to see those uh, surpluses become deficits before you get up to the bottom of the unemployment cycle and before you start to see interest rates really being jacked up. Okay, so you're again arguing that we've probably got a year or two still more of got, secular. Still got more time uh, to, to work this out. Okay, and within the stock market, let's take a look at what this could mean for different kinds of stocks. What we're looking at here is uh, the rate of change in, in those balances compared to uh, the relative performance of cyclicals and defensives. And, and once again, we've got three-year rates of change. We find mm. that's a very good um, you know, smoothing mechanism mm. to get the broad trends. And you know, those deficits have started, uh, the surpluses have started to come down, mm. so, as I say, by about minus 2, minus 3% over the last three years. You know, the equity market is believing that's not going to, to mm. continue. But actually, when you look at what the policymakers have to do to get those deficits down, the, the corporate surplus has to continue to decline. That's going to make um, a defensive suffer and uh, more cyclical stocks outperform. Because remember, this is mm. defensives versus cyclicals. What defensives are gaining in the, uh, the, yeah. the, the difficult years. Could I ask one final question? What's the biggest risk to this scenario you've just put, given to me? Could it be a deflationary shock? Would that the the biggest risk, up? yes, would actually come from Japan. You know, Japan exporting deflation through that, uh, the, through their devaluation. Unilateral QE we saw in 2011 mm. is always bad news. Okay, Ian, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I often disagree with Ian. I don't disagree with him this time, except arguably that I'm a little more worried about the prospects of uh, deflation than, than Ian is. As it stands at the moment, the picture with the Fed, despite all the great concern and volatility that it's inevitably creating, is ultimately very supportive for the stock market.